God bless you, saints of God. It's a joy to be with you today one more time in the name of Jesus. And I thank and I praise the Lord for all of you and for just taking the time out to hear the word of God today. And I would like for you to turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5. And when thou prayest, Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door pray to thy father which is in secret and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly so my thought that I want to leave with you today is is to quietly change it to quietly to change it and we live in a very attention-centered uh, society today. It's in it, what I would call an attention economy. And um, we live now in a time of social media where everyone's now is vying for attention and it's about, to, it's about being uh, seen by uh, others. So you'll find people today, instead of, let's say, just working out, that they feel the need to uh, take what we call selfies of themselves, let's say on a, a, a weight machine or lifting weights or doing aerobics or something where there's a need now that everything that we do to capture a photo or a video of it and to, to, uh, to upload it online. And it's getting to a point where even the people who created social media that they want to always keep people coming back for more, coming back. How do we get people to always come back to Facebook? How do we always get people to come back to Instagram? How do we always get people to come back to TikTok or to, uh, or to Twitter? So the way they discover to do it is, is by adding on a little button called like. So the minute uh, you click a like on it, it does something to the person who posted it, their psyche. It's a, like a feel-good thing. It's, all, it's, it's almost like a drug where it would allow the person to come back. So once they post something, uh, some activity or some event that they're a part of or some life-changing thing in their life, that they'll post it, but then they'll have to come back to see, well, who clicked like on it? How many likes do I have? How many followers uh, have, I, have I gotten? So it's become a drug to get people just to come back. So it's to a point now with even well-meaning people, you could post something uh, well-meaning about something going on in your life. And let's say you go back and you don't see that someone click like onto it, that people have the tendency of getting very upset by that, even very angry that I posted on John, I clicked like on John's post yesterday and today I posted something and John didn't click like on mine. So now we're, we're angry and we're upset. But see, people who create these things, they know that we like the attention. We know we vie for that. We know that we value uh, uh, people looking, paying attention to be seen, to feel uh, valued. So that's why they put that little button on there, that like button, so that they can get people to, to come back. So as far as seeking attention or wanting it or feeling value, there's is nothing, nothing new. Today we have social media, but that's been around four centuries as we just read here in scripture today. Now here it is that Jesus said that when you pray, he says, don't be like the, the hypocrite or a person who's phony. Now, this individual, he pointed out 
they will leave their homes. They will leave their homes with wrinkled clothes that look disheveled. They will find the most active place to uh, pray. The place that's the busiest on the corner where people are going shopping or going to the grocery store. That particular person picked that spot to pray at with an intention of gaining attention, of grabbing hold of followers. <laughs> and I'm sure that this individual, when they first prayed, that they had good intent, that they were well-meaning, but it was something about the drug of, of adulation that someone said that they prayed a great prayer. Oh, look, look how they sweat it. They must really meant it. Oh, did you see how they were crying out? God must have heard that. And it was something in their psyche of hearing that adulation about their prayer that it was a drug to them, that they wanted more. So they decided to go back the next week. And now it be, it's becoming like, like theater. Where now they're not doing it because they're praying to God, but they're doing it now for to be seen of people. So people could brag and boast on them. So Jesus said, when they set out to do that, they're gaining a reward for that, the benefit of it. And the benefit is, I did it because I want people to see it. I did it because I want people to like me. I did it because I want more followers. But Jesus said, but when you pray, don't be like that. When you pray, go into your closet, go into your room, shut the door. Don't let anyone hear you praying. And he said that the father who is unseen, which means you don't have an audience now. He's there, but you don't see him. And Jesus pointed that out because you don't see him because now you don't have to put on theater. You don't have to uh, twist up your face. You don't have to do certain pitches in your voice. You don't have to hear someone bragging like, oh, look how they're sweating. They must really love me. <laughs> he says he is unseen, which means now it is only you there and your heart. Now you have to bring the realness to it now because there is no audience. So now what's in your heart now has to pour out to God. And the realness of that prayer and the realness of, of the fasting or the realness of giving something to someone, looking for nothing in return, he says the realness will, will, will shine because you're not looking for anything in return. You're not looking for adulation. You're not looking for an audience. You're not looking for anyone to, to brag on you. And he says, the invisible God, the unseen God who sees that you are going and praying to him and fasting before him. He says, now you are rewarded openly. That's the benefit. So we live in this age now where it's about attention, about followers, about clicking likes. If you post a scripture on, let's say, Facebook well, thank God, that's a blessing. Your intent or your heart should be whoever reads it, maybe that'll brighten their day. Maybe through the scripture, it may touch someone. You may never know who it touched. But don't get sore because you went back to check to see who liked that scripture and you saw maybe only you have one click like or maybe no likes to it. But that wasn't the reason why you posted that. It should not have been for the likes or for the attention. You did it because you would want it to help somebody. You hope that that scripture would brighten someone's day. So this is what this is really all about. It's really about 
going before God. It's really about doing things from the heart. It's really about doing things for a benefit that will help other people. No different than, let's say, if you want to work out, <laughs> then you have to click and post selfies that you're sitting on a Nautilus machine or you're sitting on a, a weight machine and, and you got your sweatshirt on, you're looking sweaty, and, 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 and then you take a, a quick picture of it and upload it. There's something called a quiet change that you don't have to let everybody know, hey, I'm dieting. Hey, look, I'm working out. Oh, look what I'm doing. I'm at a, at a restaurant with a friend I didn't see in, see in years. Look at the dish that I, 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 I got. You don't have to do none of those things. A quiet change, the reward is from the work that you put into it, being committed, doing it from your heart, and doing it for the right reasons then the people will be, will be blessed from that. They will gain the benefit from that. They'll look at you and say, oh my goodness, you, you look great. Oh my goodness. It's good you go see a friend and you went out for dinner and said, oh my goodness, I haven't seen you in years. And the benefit is that you, you two are catching up on old times. Those are the joys. Those are the benefits. But it's not something where it has to be seen or or like a street corner type of thing where everybody, all 50 of your friends, all 500 of your followers on Facebook have to know this. Because once we get sucked into that drug, we'll always be looking for that. We'll always be wanting more. We'll always try to find ways to up up the last post. <laughs> this last post got, got 50 likes. I'm going to try to do it next time to see if I can get the same 50 or maybe even 60. And then we'll try to figure out ways. And then that's where a lot of people get dishonest because they're not living in realness anymore. It's no longer Facebook. It's now it's like fake book. But now we have to fake things in order for the likes, in order to, to let our life look like it, it, it looks bigger than what it really is. And then we'll be living a life like that. It, it'll become fake and it's, and it's phony. So this is what Jesus is pointing out. It's no different than if it happened in Jesus' time, it happened in our time. In that time, it was standing on the corner yelling out how much I gave and how good of a person I am and how much I'm praying and, and disheveling faces. I'm on a fast. In our, in our time today, it's all about posting on Facebook. It's all about on, being on social media. It's all about theater to make someone uh, see an image of you that's not even real. And we don't want to, as believers, we don't want to get caught up in that. There's quiet changes. If you notice in scripture, there are a lot of times where Jesus, when he brought change, when the Lord brought in change, it was quiet. One scripture says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. But there were always little, those quiet times, quiet changes that the Lord that brought in results. And that's what we want in our life, the quiet change, to know why we're doing it, the intent of why we're doing it. And that's why scripture here says, to the Father who is unseen, which means he's there listening, he's there watching, but we don't see him because it's not a distraction to us that we have to now perform or throw in theater in front of him. That's why he's, Jesus says here, the father who is unseen and he rewards you openly. See, each way, whether if I do it in, in a, a dishonest manner or whether if I do it in an in, in honest manner from the heart, it's still going to reap something. It doesn't, it doesn't care about that part because it's going to reap something anyway. Like the, the ground or soil, it doesn't care what kind of seeds you, you drop in it. You could drop in orange seeds. You could drop in cherry seeds. The ground itself isn't biased. Whatever you drop in that soil is going to produce it. It's going to reap something. 
So it's the same with our lives and our heart today. That no matter why we're doing something or the or, or whatever it is we're looking for, whatever we drop out in it, it's going to produce it. It's going to gain a reward. Jesus said in the case with uh, the hypocrite, their uh, intent was to go on the street corner to pray so people can hear them, to see them, to brag on them. He says, well, they that's the benefit. So they got they're getting their reward because they left home in their heart with that intent. He says, but when you pray, don't do it in that manner. You pray in secret. You close your door. And he says the father, he hears it and he'll reward you openly. So I pray that the word of God was a blessing to you today. So now we are going to go into uh, the book of Luke and we are going to go now into our communion. Turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 22. In verse 7. Then came the day of unliving bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, where wilt thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entered in. And ye shall say unto the good man of the house, the master said unto thee, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished, and there make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not there eat any more until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread. And gave thanks. And break it. And gave unto them saying. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And with those words they all did eat. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And with those words, they all did drink. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you, Lord God, for today. We thank you for all your many blessings. We thank you for your word. We honor it today, Lord. We thank you for the communion that we partake in. You said for us often as we eat of your body and drink of your blood, we show forth your death. We are reminded and we are remembering your death until you come back. We thank you today for the communion. We thank you most of all for all those who heard your word today. I pray that you continue to bless them and keep them and continue to meet their needs. Those who are not well in their body, we are praying a special prayer for them. We are sending a word of healing, a word of encouragement to them, to their household right now, in your name, in the name of Jesus. We know you as Jehovah Rapha, that you are the Lord who healeth us. And we thank you for that, Lord. And we thank you for your word today. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. So God bless you. I thank God for you. Remember the word today, the quiet change. Seek out the quiet changes in your life. The Lord let us know, don't be as those who are looking for the reward or the benefit of people, of adulation from people, 
of letting people see what you're doing so that they can boast on you or brag on you. He says, if you do it that way, that is the reward that you're getting. That is the benefit of it. There is nothing else that's going to come from that, from the Lord. That if you set out for that, well, that's what you're going to get. But he says, don't do that. When you go and pray, if you give alms to someone, if you fast, or even in your natural lifestyle, whatever it is you're attempting to do in your lifestyle, maybe you, you want to uh, work out more, maybe you want to diet, maybe some type of change you want in your life, you don't have to announce it or broadcast it. Have those quiet changes in your life. And those things that you do in secret or you do sort of on the down low where everyone doesn't see it, it's going to benefit somebody because it's going to be seen. It's going to show because that's how change works. When you put in the work to it or the hard work, it's going to show. And if you do it with the right intent and the right mind, it's going to help a lot of people. A lot of people are going to benefit from it. They're going to see your humility in it. And that's going to encourage them to want to change as well. So God bless you and enjoy the rest of your day in the name of Jesus. God bless you and I thank God for you.